things. And, you know, we, we, we're lucky that we have a fortunate situation where we're not toiling necessarily with our body as much, generally speaking. But on the other hand, sitting for long periods of time is, people say sitting is the new smoking. I don't know if you guys have heard that. But sitting is hard on the back and it's hard on the body. Nothing's moving. The systems aren't strengthening. Your back posture is typically worsening, etc. So the idea that sitting is bad for us over a long period of time is now becoming well known and it's a real issue. So to the point, what do we do to sit well? What is sitting well? And of course, with scoliosis, it's much more important. Everything to do with the back is much more important when we have scoliosis. So... Um, let me know if you're watching, drop a little comment, say where you're coming from. I've pinned a comment for myself saying, write your questions here. So throughout the time, let's go ahead and get any questions you have into the side and I'll answer those when I can. I'll take a look at the side and we'll, I'll answer those for you guys. Okay. Let me make this big. Actually, I've got an idea here. All right. All right, so first thing we're gonna talk about is chair, and then we're gonna to get to cross-legged. We're gonna try and do it about 15 minutes each. I'm gonna to try to stick to the half an hour, even though I started late, as I said, so that you guys don't have a very long thing to review if you're seeing this in the replay, so you really do have a half an hour session. So let's talk about sitting on a chair. All right, so a couple things that, that we're worried about with, with sitting, um, and a couple things we wanna do. So. One of the things that we want to, we have basically two options when we're sitting. We, are, we have the option to sit unsupported with our back, right? So not supported or supported on our back rest, right? In some way or another. So let's look at both of those. Just turn off the lighting a little bit here. Okay. So let's look at both of those. Um, when you're sitting on a chair, <clears throat> before you even think about putting yourself, leaning back on a, on, on a back rest or not, you have to think about how you set yourself up first. So let's go from the bottom up, right? So the feet, first of all, when you sit down, put your feet under your knees, okay? At about a 90 degree angle. So let me show you this on my handy dandy bench here. Okay, so feet under the knees. Now you can play with this a bit, if it's a bit more comfortable, okay? But basically, under the knees, approximately 90 degrees, and a little bit wider gives you a more ba a firm base of support, a more solid base of support. Some people prefer to sit like this, that's fine. It gives you a bit more of a narrow base of support, but you can work with that if that's comfortable for you. Okay, so that's okay. What is not great with the feet and the legs is to be crossing them, or like this. Now, that being said, okay, let's, let, we, you've got to take what we're talking about today with a grain of salt. We're human beings, and we're not going to be able to sit in a beneficial posture for more than a few minutes at a time, especially when you start. Okay? At, with time, you'll be able to develop this more, but in the beginning, you'll put yourself in a good posture, you'll you know, put your feet nicely, and then you'll tire, and you will end up like this or like this, and you know, that's, so it's okay, right? If you're doing this, you can even do a stretch, you know, you can lean forward, that's a topic for another day, but, um, so it's okay to shift your posture around, but just, we need to be aware of what is a posture that's good for us over time, and what are postures that are actually contributing to, de to degeneration over time, or positions. So that's what we're talking about, we're talking about setting up a position of our limbs, <clears throat> starting from the bottom up, as we said, and then that goes to the back and that helps to support our back and helps to give us a beneficial opportunity to strengthen our back and even improve the position of our, of our spine. So there we go, we talked about the feet and the, and now and the next important thing is, once you've got your feet there, and, and I'm not doing it right now, is that you need to have a little bit higher, your thighs at your hips, which is here, need to be a little bit higher than your thighs at your knees. Now, a lot of the literature on this says that you should have a 90 degree angle, which is just straight, right? 90 like that, a 90 straight. But I'll tell you what, that's not going to be ideal. And I'll tell you why. One of the main things that you need to be thinking about when you're sitting on a chair or cross-legged, but especially on a chair, is reducing, or rather keeping, excuse me, keeping the neutral position of the spine. So if you remember from our other videos and our discussions, the neutral position of the spine is that you have a lumbar curve, okay? You have somewhat of a lumbar curve. The vertebrae are actually shaped so that when there's a lumbar curve, and this, these are the normal curves of the back. You have a lumbar curve, which goes in, um, thoracic curve, which goes back, and that cervical curve, which goes in again. So that's where you get that sideways 
position of the spine, right? So that, that's healthy, okay? The spine actually needs those curves. So when you're sitting, you don't want to completely reduce this lumbar curve. You don't want to get rid of it, okay? You actually want to keep it. So if my thighs at my hips are a little higher than my knees, I create an ideal position to keep this neutral spine. So I'm going to come here and grab my handy dandy cushions. Okay, I'm going to put this here. This is going to elevate me a little bit higher than I need to, uh, but I'll, it'll, we'll use it anyway. If I move that carpet, that'll be a little better. <clears throat> Not carpet, the blanket, rather. No, I'm going to keep the blanket, too. Okay, so this is what you guys need to do. You need to experiment at home so that you've got something firm under your bottom, on your chair, so that you elevate your bottom a little bit higher right, than the knees. So now I have a slight slope here. So, this, you've got to try this, okay, maybe not right now, but a little later, pause it if you're watching this on replay and try this, okay? Bring it up and you will see, lo and behold, how much easier it is to sit and keep that lumbar curve, that neutral spine, and then you can easily bring your chest up and bring your chin in a little bit for a little bit more elongation. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Okay, so, <clears throat> what we've established is that we need to have our feet flat on the floor, Stable, like a sphinx, right? Like a like a like a construction, like some kind of engineering construction. Okay, flat on the floor, under our knees. Okay, they could be a little more back, a little more forward, but flat on the floor under the knees. We discuss the angle of our thighs, and now our bottom is firmly on our support. So let's talk about our support, our chair. Ideally, you're not. Uh, ideally, for sitting without a backrest, you should be near the front of your chair. So you see how my hips are on the chair, my pelvis is on the chair, but most of my thighs is off of the chair. Okay, so now, again, we've set up from the bottom up a lovely foundation, a very nice foundation, so that we can keep that neutral spine, and then we can work. So if we're discussed now, if we want to discuss working, okay, let's just take a moment to discuss ergonomics at a desk. So ideally, your elbows and your arms are about at a 90, 90 degree angle, and they don't have to go far. Ideally, you don't have to do a lot of this. The more you're doing this, the more you're reaching, the more you're promoting this slouch and this slumped over posture, which is very, very common when we're working at a desk, right? As we, we're, we all have seen this, either ourselves or someone we know has a lot of, has some kyphosis, in, possibly just in relation to how they sit at the desk, or soreness up here, right? So forward head posture, soreness. Okay, so we want those arms close. We don't want... We don't want to generate leverage. We don't want to have a lot. The further out you go, the more leverage you have. Okay, here we're coming in close, typing here. Okay, and your screen should never make you look up. Your screen should be a little bit down, about a couple inches down, or at the worst, straight on from your vision. Okay, so a little bit down. What does that do? That promotes the chin in posture, which promotes a little bit of elongation, gentle elongation through the cervical spine. So let's pause for a couple, and talk about some themes here for a minute. You can see that I'm talking about a theme of, and this, is, this goes through all of my scoliosis relief program. We have a theme of keeping appropriate neutral spine positions, okay, but lessening them in many cases. So here we are, here I'm standing up, sort of military straight, ears over my shoulders, shoulders over my hips, okay? Now, when I come into a position where I'm sitting, I lessen those curves. I bend those knees, the curves become a little bit less. Okay? When I put my chin in, the curves in my neck become a little bit less. So I'm, there is a straightening of the spine happening, but it's very important that you understand that we don't want to completely straighten the spine. We're not trying to remove all the neutral, normal curves of the spine. We need them. Okay? We don't want to remove them all. Okay? Just keep that in mind. So when I say we're going to be promoting a posture uh, with the chin in and a little bit of elongation through the cervical vertebrae, I don't mean you want to be completely straight. I just mean that you're going to change it a little bit. Okay, so then that brings us to the discussion of how to strengthen our back in these positions and why it's, it's good to be sitting like this. So once you have sat yourself in this position, okay, and brought your chest up a bit, chin in a bit, so that's a little bit of elongation in the upper half of your back, okay? The lower back, we're not worried about elongating right now when we're sitting, okay, in this posture on a chair. We're just going to keep that neutral curve. But because we elongated in the upper spine with the chest up, chin in, you're getting those extensors. We call them the extensor muscles. They're the muscles that, that do this with your back, that extend your back. This is flexion of the spine, flexing. 
and it's mostly your abdominal muscles that are involved in that. And then this is extension of the spine when you go when you were to do that kind of move. So what we're doing is we want those extensors to be active, and we want them to be doing some work supporting our spine, strengthening around the beautiful spinal column, okay, our precious spinal column. So we've established our position. We've discussed how we're going to set it up. We've discussed the leverage that we need. And now you can play with tilting from your waist. So notice I'm not folding. This would be folding. Watch this. This would be folding from my waist. So if you're doing a stretch, like a forward fold or what have you, this is perfectly fine just to fold through the spine. But when you want to sit in a good posture, you actually don't want to promote a folding motion. You want to keep yourself in that upright extension. And then if you want to generate more leverage through the extensors of your back, you tilt forward at the waist, but you keep that posture. So my chest is still up. My neutral spine is still here. Okay, And so you play with a little bit of leaning. Once you lean... You'll, you'll, you'll intuitively feel like you want to bring your chest up and chin in, as long as you're trying to keep that neutral spine here. Okay, so you're getting a little bit of a lean, and you're activating the extensors. And I'll tell you what, my friends, this is a lovely experiment. This is everything that I tell you to uh, show you to do, and everything that we discuss in these lives are things for you to try, and then come back to the group with what you experienced. Come back with your questions. Come back with your problems. Come back with any discomfort you have so that we can all think about it and problem solve together, okay? Because the principles are sound. They're good principles. But then working with them is a little complicated, right? But don't let that scare you guys. That's what I'm here for. That's what this group is for. Don't let that scare you. So work on it a little bit. Experiment a little bit. And what will happen is when you start playing around like this, okay? So let's say you put yourself in this nice upright posture. You're working. You do a little bit of this back and forth. Finally, what's going to happen is your scoliosis curves are going to say hello. They're going to say, oh, John, I'm a little bit uncomfortable here, and I'm a little bit uncomfortable there. Because I'll tell you what, let's remember our principles from scoliosis, okay, the curves of scoliosis. You are weaker on the convex side of your curve, right? We have convex and concave. Remember cave, right? That's how you can think about that side. Con and then vex, convex. <clears throat> The convex side is actually weaker. And so when you've put yourself in that nice position and you start tilting a little forward and you're generating some extensor activity in your back, keeping that neutral spine, eventually the parts of your spine that are weaker are going to tire first and they're going to become a little bit uncomfortable and that's going to be your cue to come back and talk to me and we're going to look at what you can do next. There's a, you don't, you don't, I'm not saying you have to talk to me. There's a lot of different things you can do. You can do some uh, fascial release. You can do a little stretching. But that's what this program is about, is we're targeting those weak areas to strengthen them. And so we want to tire them out. We want to find out where they are. We want to know them. And we want to then gently, carefully work with them. Okay? Make sense, guys? So, now, briefly, we're coming to the end of this first 15-minute period. Let's talk about supporting your back. So let's say you're going to lean back, right? I don't have a backrest here on my bench. Okay, so, but we all do have chairs with backrest. And so the key thing to remember is that if you're going to lean back, so if you get a, if you were thinking about getting an ergonomic chair, you need to be able to adjust the height so you can accomplish this leverage or you can add things to it, right? You can put cushions, so you don't necessarily have to be able to adjust the height. Um, but it's, people say that that's ideal. Um, it's generally recommended, right? But again, Take out the grain of salt. You know what I'm saying? Like, it might be ideal, but it doesn't mean you have to do that. You can just use a cushion, okay? And you can accomplish the same thing. So, we need to think about our height. And then we need to think about, for backrests, you need to think about lumbar support. So, once again, it's really important, guys. The key concept here is this neutral spine in the lumbar area. And you might say, John, why the lumbar area? Well, the answer is that almost all of the back pain and problems that we get from sitting in the back manifest in the lumbar area. The lumbar vertebrae, those lower five vertebrae in your back, are very, um, they're mobile, they're very large, they're larger than any of the other vertebrae because they take the force of the whole upper body, and they're also a, 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 a kind of center of motion, so the center of, your, center of gravity is just a bit below your belly button, so all the movement of your upper movements, everything from the ground up, all of that is coming in through these lumbar vertebrae. So they're bigger, they're stronger, but they're also more prone to injury. Okay? So that's why low back injury is such a huge issue. And it's no less of an issue with scoliosis, right? Maybe it's, it's probably more of an issue with scoliosis. So 
because everything, every problem with the back is more with scoliosis. Okay? So if you're leaning back, you want to have a chair that has a lumbar support. You can also jimmy rig that. You can also put a cushion. Okay? And a note on driving here, it's almost impossible to keep an ideal posture when you're driving in a car. Very few cars, first of all, have the ability to bring you up this high. Second of all, you're already using your feet on pedals, one foot at least, on pedals, if not both. So that changes everything, right? So now, and then you're, you're steering and you're thinking about a lot of different things. So don't try and do this in particular when you're driving. If you drive for a living, write me a message and we'll talk about that. Okay, I have a Toyota um, that happens to give me that, that uh, adjustment with the seat. It's not one of the fancy ones, it's electric. It's just old, you know, I just crank it up. I can actually get some leverage in my seat and my backrest goes up pretty upright in my backrest. Most cars I've driven, don't have that. And my, it's not a new Toyota either. Okay, so that's just different car models have different seats. That's an aside. Okay, so we're not talking about when we're driving here. We're talking about when we're sitting at home at dinner with friends, watching TV for a portion, and especially at work on a chair. Okay, guys, so lumbar support. Okay, now, if you're going to lean back, you know, fine, but look what happens. You know, it, it, we need to rest. Okay, but if I, if I do this, it's not ideal. Okay, that being said, that being said, you are going to do that a bit. You are going to maybe lean on your desk. You are going to lean on the table. You are going to just do things with your posture that are comfortable for a moment or you know, a few minutes. So once you've relaxed, once you've rested, when you're tired, come back into an improved position. Hold it for a few minutes at a time. You can time it, see how long you can hold it. A secret sauce here is that when you have this leverage with the knees, you actually are able to breathe into your abdomen. Your abs don't have to work. You can switch all of the work of, for, of holding up your back, almost all of the work, to your, to your back muscles, those extensor muscles. And your abs can be free and you can do what's called abdominal breathing, which those of you who know from my other videos, is an important way to work with what's called your parasympathetic nervous system, relax your nervous system, and improve your overall health, not to mention improve your nervous system's ability to feel your scoliosis and work with your scoliosis. So, joined from Norway, hi. Barbara, how are you doing? Good to see you guys. So I'm going to now get down on the ground and we're going to look at cross-legged. So half an hour is maybe not really enough time to do this very, very well, but I know that I'm going to give you lots of things to think about and I know that I'm going to give you things that we'll, you'll have questions about and that's useful. Okay, so I hope that that sitting on a chair was interesting and you got some information from that that you can use. Okay, so let's go down to sitting cross-legged. So now, first thing we need to say about sitting cross-legged is it's not for everyone. Okay, in the Scoliosis Relief Program, um, I only introduced sitting cross-legged in Module 2, and not everyone can do it in Module 2. So that means that you spend at least a month sitting on a chair and opening up the flexibility of your hips and your legs, your hamstrings in particular, to um, to be able to sit in a cross-legged position. Okay, so I want you to all understand that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right off the bat, cross-legged position is not something you should throw yourself into because if you're twisting yourself into a pretzel, you could easily hurt your knees. You could hurt, um, you know, you make your back sore, etc. So the key thing with cross-legged positions, my friends, is that you have enough flexibility in your hips and your legs to be able to put yourself in a cross-legged position comfortably. So let's discuss briefly, same principles as sitting in a chair. So my bum is high enough, my bottom is high enough that when I cross my legs, my knees are slightly lower, my, or rather my thighs, my thigh bones, are slightly lower at the knee than they are at the hip. So it's the same idea as, as sitting on the chair. Okay? Now, it's more complicated though because you have to get your feet to settle comfortably. So very briefly, let's look at what we need to do with the feet. If you put yourself in a cross-legged position and you've got a leg that's hanging up here, it's, you, you need more flexibility, okay? You can support that leg with cushions, okay, if you needed to, okay? But basically speaking, if your knees are up here, you need to spend more time working on the flexibility of your hips and your legs so that your knees can come down enough that they can rest. So okay, let's look at what they're resting on. Front leg is resting on the, um, the arch of the other foot. 
And, okay, so I'm going to bring my shin here onto this arch of this foot. Bingo. Now it can actually rest because I have enough flexibility. It can actually rest its weight there. Now the one on the back is resting on the heel of the front. See how that front leg just tucks in there? So that is basically, there's a word that you can call this cobbler posture, basic posture, number of words for it. Um, actually, I don't think this is cobbler posture. Um, that's, a, that's, uh, that's, that's a mistake. Uh, so on my part. So that's a little different. So anyway, basic cross-legged posture. Okay, so there you go. Once you set up that framework, okay, and again, talk to me about it, then we go to the back. Now, this posture is actually more powerful for working with the back because we actually have more, we can generate more leverage, and we're actually supporting the back a little bit more because of the wideness of our base of support that we established with the cross-legged position and with the knees opening up, you actually make a wider base of support for your spine. So, <clears throat> there we are, same principles, neutral spine, okay, neutral lumbar spine, chest up, chin in, elongated spine, remember we talk a lot about elongation, that is the number one goal of uh, so sort for a conservative scoliosis exercise program, is to elongate through that precious spine of ours. So, we are elongating here, okay. Neutral spine, here's what I don't want to do, okay? Now, that being said, again, remember, we keep coming back to this. We're humans. We're going to tire. You're going to tire. So when you put yourself in a nice position, you've made sure you have the foundation first. Whether chair or cross-legged, you need the foundation or nothing works up top, just like a building, right? No, we don't have a proper foundation laid. The rest of it isn't going to work the way we need it to, right? Obviously. <clears throat> And worse, you know, the building isn't going to stand up properly at all, etc. So neither are we. So a good foundation, neutral spine, chest up, chin in, elongated spine, able to breathe freely and thoroughly into your abdomen. Okay, so you can practice doing that a bit. Again, that's a whole other live where we'll talk again about breathing. Three different types of breathing that we look at in the program. But, okay, we want to be able to breathe into that abdomen. So that means that I can't have my knees like this. Try this if, you, if your knees are like this, because when you sit up, you're using your abs and you can't breathe into your abdomen because your abs are clenched, okay? So when your knees can come down and when you can get this leverage, once again, as in sitting on the chair, the extensors of the back can mostly take over and we can play with being upright <clears throat> and then a subtle lean forward to activate through those extensors. Again and again, we can, not, not quite the way I'm doing it, like back and forth, but um, every now and again. Experiment a bit, move a little bit, okay? You can do a little bit of side. Within the program, I show you how to do a little bit of sideways movement in module two to warm up and get yourself going in this position. But there you are. You are in a cross-legged position. You are elongating gently. You are activating the extensors of the back. You are keeping the neutral spine, okay? You are not looking for a perfectly straight spine, okay? <clears throat> You're keeping that neutral spine, excuse me, <clears throat> got to clear my throat. There it is. All right, so that, in a nutshell, is what you're doing. And so how is that good for scoliosis? So remember, we need to work on the extensors of the back. We need those back muscles to be active, and we need them to work especially on the convex side of any curve that we have in our back. Now, the back is a pretty complex place. The spine is the most complex series of joints that you have in the human body, and I would argue the most important series because it's central. It how our spinal column houses our nervous system, and if we don't, if we can't work with our spine, we can't do anything. If we have back serious back pain or back problems, we can't do anything, right? We're basically immobilized. We're not physically capable of doing things. So the back is extremely important, our spine, and supporting it for being able to do what we want to do, having going forward, all right, working with our scoliosis and going forward in our life. Okay, so that covers basically what I wanted to cover. And as I mentioned, I'm, I'm working to, to keep myself on the timeline. I want to keep it to half an hour. And uh, do you guys have any questions? Even after this is over and you're watching the replay, drop your questions in and I'll see them. I get a notification, usually. I get a notification or I'll see it. Worst case scenario, I'll see it after a few days. Um, and I will answer you, and we will discuss it in the group. And your questions will help everyone.
everyone else in the group too. So I want to encourage all of you to really do ask questions. Now, you've heard the uh, expression, there's no such thing as a stupid question. <clears throat> I have kids, four kids. So I've added to that. And I was a kid, as were we all. And uh, so I like to qualify that by saying the only stupid question is a question that is asked with a stupid intention. <laughs> Let me clarify. So what I mean by that is if I, as a kid, was being a smart aleck and I asked a question with a smart aleck intention, right, you know, whatever that might be, an insincere intention, then that was stupid. And that was a stupid question on my part, right? So I joke about that with my kids. So, but if you're sincere, your question, right, which is easy, you know, you just, you want to know something, then there's no such thing as a stupid question. All right. And I remember in, even in university sitting in classes and having a burning question that I felt was really stupid. And then either I would have the courage to ask it and then people would tell me, thank you, or someone else would ask it. Yeah. And uh, it was funny. And someone else would ask it. And I'd go, oh, they asked it. And I'd feel so relieved because I really wanted to know. And they had the courage to do it. I think it was more often the, fact, the time that other people would have the courage to do it. And that would inspire me. And I'd think, you know what? That really is that old adage in practice there. You know? And the teachers, that's what they want to do. And that's what I want to be able to help you guys. You know? As simple as your question may seem, ask it. You know? If you, if you want to know, it's not stupid. Okay? It doesn't matter how simple it might seem. So... Is there any other questions you guys want to discuss? Any other things you guys want to discuss about this? We just we looked at sitting on a chair, sitting uh, cross-legged. If we review, before I finish, if we review some of the principles that we looked at here, we looked at the main thing with sitting is lumbar neutrality. If you're not using a support, right? Keeping the neutral spine in the lumbar area. If you're not using a support so that you can, the, the spine is in a position that isn't compressing the lumbar vertebrae. And with a support, also keeping that neutral spine, right? So this, these, are, these are key, key, key concepts. Another key concept is the height difference, right? 90 is not enough, okay? Maybe you can get away with it, but, you know, maybe that's not the right term, but I mean, maybe you can do it and it'd be okay, but um, you really want to be a little higher. So actually right now, this is not ideal, okay? I've got to bring this up a little bit for myself, working at the desk later today, okay? So a little bit higher, okay? Neutral spine active extensors, active back musculature, right? That's how we're connecting this to working with our scoliosis. We're not just, and that's why I prefer that you don't use a backrest as much as you can. So that may have been implied up till now. I said, you know, you can rest if a backrest, if you're using a backrest or not, but you still need to keep your back in a particular position, that neutral position. That being said, I, I suggest and I prefer and I want to help work you guys work with not using a backrest as much as you can and simply bringing your spine into an upright position, neutral spine, balancing it there, working, taking a break when you need to, putting up a foot, you might come to a stretch, you might do it, whatever you want, change it up, okay? But then come back to your good position. Someone asked me earlier, Barbara was saying to me, I'm willing to work at it. So I've been doing this for years and I'm able to do it for quite a long time. I'm able to sit upright for maybe half an hour at a time, maybe a little more without changing my position and be okay. Okay. That being said, one other thing, take breaks. Okay. So once, if you're sitting a lot, if you, if you do this, if your job is sitting at a desk, try to take breaks, even if it's just brief, even if it's just standing up, moving a little bit, put your arms behind, get a little stretch going, you know, Get a little upper body stretch here, little arms. You can bring a leg up, work on the hip a little bit, lean forward for a hip stretch, okay? Move, change your position if you can, as much as you can. And then the last thing I'll say to finish off is, don't be dismayed when you try this position and you tire quite fast, and in fact, you find some, discom some significant discomfort in your back. Okay, I'll say that again. When you do this position and you're working on holding yourself in a position that is that you understand is a beneficial, found uh, construction, a beneficial foundation of your bones so that your muscles work in a way that's good for you, you are going to find areas of your back that tire and that tell you they're not up to it and they're sore and you have to be very patient. Do not force and do not push yourself through pain, please. Don't just push hard because that, that leads to injury and then you can't do things for even longer period of time. So respect your body. When you're tired, rest. Come back carefully to it. 
And sometimes it'll even take a few days. Sometimes you may be sore in a particular place for a few days and you may have to work on that and come back to it. So that's why the scoliosis relief program covers all these different areas of strengthening, stretching and myofascial release, postural sitting and standing that's good for you, postural yoga for sitting and standing that's good for you, breathing and scoliometer usage. So I think I'm missing one, but you guys can remind me if I'm missing one there. But that's why the scoliosis relief program is a rounded program to help you deal with the tiring and the effects of doing the exercises and get your body used to slowly advancing into beneficial positions and being able to hold them for longer and longer and benefit the position of your spine and hopefully reduce that cob angle, okay? Not that far-fetched. People are doing it, it's happening. The exercises that we're doing work. It's amazing, I didn't make them up all by, by myself, right? Um, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, but that help is key, okay? So just keep moving forward and uh, we will enjoy like that and we will get some hope. You'll get access to some hope once you get a little bit of benefit